Hello everyone, I am Ardhan Dode, you are watching ADC English Literature. Herein, I am going to carry out a detailed analysis on humor and pathos as used by Charles Lamb in his Essays of Ilya. Particularly, our mode of discussion is on his beautiful essay, Dream Children, Erevary. Some things are of that nature as to make one's fancy chuckle while his heart doth act. This is the phrase written by Banyan. The nature of things mostly appeared to Charles Lamb in this way. Lamb does not frolic out of lightness of heart, but to escape from gloom that might otherwise crass. He loved to save himself from weeping. In fact, Lamb's personal life was of disappointments and frustrations. But instead of complaining, he looked at the tragedies of life, its miseries and worries as a humorist. Thus his essays, the whole of the essays from Essays of Ilya become an admixture of humor and pathos. We can take examples each and every piece from his Elia group. The sense of humor and pathetic touches are scattered in all of his essays just as it has been a mode of his stylistic expression. Now as we are discussing this particular essay, our focus is on this particular essay, Dream Children, a referee. We are all little bit acquainted with Charles Lamb, the romantic essayist, a kind of writing in whom we can find out the style which is Lamb's own and which is unparalleled to English literature. The deep note of pathos, the deep note of romantic idealism, the deep note of nostalgia is everywhere in Lamb's writing. In fact, in Lamb's writing, wit, humor and fun are interwoven. And it is humor which is most notable for his extreme sensitiveness to the true proportion of things. Lamb often brings out the two sides of the same fact and causes laughter at our own previous misconceptions. Therefore, it borders on the painful realization that his humor is the very nearly allied to pathos. They are different facts of the same gem. In his essay Dream Children a Revery, Lamb talks of personal sorrows and joys. He gives expressions to his unfulfilled longings and desires. He readily enters into the world of fantasy and pops up stories in front of his dream children. Just imagine, the children he is describing is all but dreams. He relates his childhood days of Mrs. Field, his grandmother and John Lamb, his brother. He describes how fun he had at the great house and orchard in Norfolk. Of his relations, he gives us full and living pictures. His brother John is James Elia of my relations. But here is John L. So handsome and spirited youth and a king. John was brave, handsome and own admiration from everybody. Charles can mother, Mrs. Field is the other living picture. In fact, she is such alive in all the tales of his old days. She was a good-natured and religious-minded lady of respectable personality. Lamb sweetheart Alice Winterton is the other side of reality. The dream children Alice and John are mere bubbles of fancy. 
So Lab's nostalgic memory transports us back to those good old days of great grandmother field and when his brother was alive and when those little kids were figments of imagination popping up in his own childhood days. But even in those romantic nostalgia, the hard realities of life does not miss our eyes. Death, separation, suffering inject us deep-rooted pathos in our heart. Whereas Mrs. Field died of cancer, John Lamb died in early age. And Simmons has been a tale of unrequited love story like that of Final of Deferex. So the Charles Lamb story has been a tale of pathos, sorrows and tears. Notably the children which are being described here are millions of ages distant of oblivion and Charles is not a married man but a bachelor having a reverie, a daydream. In his actual life, Lamb quoted Anne Simmons but could not marry her. He wanted to have children but could not have any. Thus he strikes a very pathetic note towards the end of the essay when he says the following words in the mouth of his imaginary children. We are not of Alice, nor of thee, nor are we children at all. We are nothing less than nothing dreams we are only what might have been alice is here no other than and simon the girl lamb wanted to marry but failed to marry her in fact the subtitle of the essay a reverie which literally means a dream lost into oblivion or a kind of a fantasy prepares us for the pathos of the return to reality. Although the essay begins on a deceptively realistic note, but gradually, inch by inch, we lead forward into that unrealistic, dreamy world. But again, we dashed back into hard realities. The hardy rocks of realism strikes us back into the reality that Charles Lamb is lonely, pathetic, and dejected. Although Dream Children begins on a merry note, the dark side of the life soon forces itself upon Lamb's attention, and the comic attitude gives away a melancholy at the end of the essay. Throughout the essay, Lamb presents his children in such a way that we never guess that they are merely figments of his imagination. Their movements, their winking, their little foot fidgeting, their reactions, their expressions are all realistic. It is only at the end of the essay that we realize that I have just told that the entire episode with his children is a daydream. We are awakened by a painful realization of the facts and the, the, and the facts are hard realism and very much tearful. Lamb's humor was no surface play, but the flower flucked from the needle of peril and awe. In fact, Lamb's humor and pathos take different steps in different essays. Sometimes it is due to his own unfulfilled desires. Sometimes it is due to the ill fortunes of his relatives, friends, and on some other occasions, it is due to his frustration in love. So many things pops up in his life. But does Lamb sell any pathos in his essays? That's not. But it is kind of a realism and his presentation of realism is through pathos and humor. If his poor relations begin humorously of a male and female poor relation, he later gives us a few pathetic examples of poor relation that had to suffer on account of poverty. Again, in 
is the praise of chimney sweepers. Lamb sways between humor and pathos while describing the chimney sweepers. Similarly, the essay Dream Children that we are presently discussing is a beautiful projection of Lamb's feelings and desire to have a wife and children of his own, but he couldn't have. It is humor. It is humor that has been blended with pathos. It is humorous that in his dream he is married and has two children of his own while he had a disheartening frustration in love. Thus, Lamb has painted both the lights and shades of life in full circle. So, we can say his is the criticism of life in pathos and humors. This is the small discussion that I have carried out on Charles Lamb's creative styles of blending humor and pathos together. And our mode of discussion had been on his writing Dream Children a reverie. So if you have any question regarding this essay, just ask me. I will try my best to give some answers. Like, share, comment and obviously subscribe to my channel. Bye bye. Thank you.